Who knows what we'll find beneath? Diamonds, rubies, gold, and more hidden in the mountain store. So let's add custom ore to Minecraft. Playing Minecraft is awesome. Playing with mods is even better, but the best is playing with mods and friends. Official partner of the channel, Bisect Hosting, has you covered. With its easy-to-use panel, you can effortlessly install over 2,000 different mod packs with one click of a button. But it gets even better if you use my link in the description below and use the code COUNTENJOY at checkout. As a new customer, you will get an additional 25% off your first month. So check out Bisect Hosting for a smooth gaming experience and your server hosting needs. Visit bisecthosting.com slash and use the code COUNTENJOY at checkout for 25% off your first month. All right, my friends, back in Telegram more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom ore generation to Minecraft. Yes, indeed, the highly anticipated topic. Now, what's quite important for ore gen over here is that you will need data gen. While it is technically possible to do it without data gen, because it's basically just a bunch of JSON files, I cannot recommend enough setting up data gen over here once so you're basically done and you don't have to do it again if you really really don't want to use data gen then absolutely totally fine you can take a look at the generated json files in the github repository take a look at how they are formatted and basically change them to suit your needs and copy them over doing it the data gen route is going to be about 100 times easier so for this in the tutorial mod package we're going to make a new package called world and then inside of there we need another new package and that's going to be the gen package First of all, in the world package, we're going to create a three new classes. That's the mod configured features class. There you go. We then also want in the world package, the mod or placement class. There you go. And then last, but certainly not least, we want the mod placed features class. There you go. I'm going to start with the mod configured features over here. So the idea of a configured feature is basically it is a feature that has a certain configuration. Now, in our case, we're going to add an or configuration. Basically, that's sort of telling the world generation, OK, this is somehow how I want to place this. And for this, we need two helper methods over here. I've copied those over. Those are basically always going to be the same for the mod configured features class over here so you can just copy those over as well from the github repository so just take a look you can see we're basically registering a key over here for a configured feature under our mod id and then here we're actually registering the configured feature itself with this with a key that was given right here so this is basically the general idea and then for this we of course need the keys now the keys are going to be public static final registry key of type configured feature of type question mark comma question mark so it has to be set up exactly like this. And then this is going to be the Ruby underscore or underscore key equal to the register key method. And then this is going to be the Ruby underscore or. There you go. And that's going to be the configured feature for Ruby or. We can now duplicate this twice and we can also add the nether underscore Ruby or. And then here, of course, don't forget to change the name here. That's very important, right? Nether Ruby or. And then this is the end Ruby or. And then here the same thing, end underscore Ruby underscore or. So we have three registry keys and that's exactly what we want. Then we're going to have a public static void bootstrap method over here with a registerable of type configured feature of type question mark comma question mark. I'm going to call this the context here in this case. And this is where the magic happens. So inside of the bootstrap method, this is actually where we're going to register this, which is then going to later be turned into JSON files with the name Ruby or Nether Ruby or and End Ruby or more or less. So for this, first of all, we need to get some rule tests. Now, the rule tests are very simple. You can see this is rule tests. And the first one is going to be the stone replaceables. There you go, which is going to be a new tag match rule test. And this is going to be block tags dot stone or replaceables there you go and the idea is that when we have a certain ore that we want to be able to replace stone right obviously the ruby ore would be one of those ores then this is the type of rule test that we wanted to use i'm going to duplicate this three more times because we also want the deep slate replaceables which is in this case going to be the deep slate or replaceables block tag right here we then also have the nether replaceables which we're going to use the base stone nether here in this case and then the last one which is going to be the end replaceables this time we actually want a new block match rule test because in this case we actually have to check for end stone itself instead of a tag here in this case because in the end there isn't really any tag that we can basically check for but those are going to be the four different rule tests. And now out of those rule tests, we're going to build a list of targets, which are basically going to be, okay, you can replace this type of target with this type of block. So the idea is that, so this is going to be a list of 
or feature config.target, and that's going to be the overworld Ruby ors, which is going to be equal to a list.of or feature config.create target. First is the rule test, so this would be stone replaceables. And then what can be replaced with that? Well, it's going to be the Ruby underscore or dot get default state. And after the second closing parenthesis, we want to add another or feature config.create target over here, which is going to be the deep slate replaceables, which there, of course, it's going to be the deep slate Ruby or dot get default state. And there you go. So basically, this is going to say, okay, for our overworld Ruby ores, we can replace, you know, the stone replaceable block tag with Ruby ore and everything that's in deep slate, we can replace with a deep slate Ruby ore. That is the general idea here. Now, with this list created, what we can do is we can just duplicate this. And then the second one here is going to be the nether Ruby ores, where we will only have one element over here. So basically, this is going to be the nether Ruby ores where, well, of course, there's going to be the nether replaceables. Now, what type of block can be replaced there? Of course, the nether Ruby ore default state. And then here for the end Ruby ores, well, what is this going to be? It's going to be pretty simple, right? Of course, this is going to be the end replaceables and which type of ore? Of course, the end stone Ruby ore. This should be fairly self-explanatory when you think about it, right? We basically just define what type of block we can replace. And then this is the block that we can replace it with. And now to add those, we want to call the register method, this one right here, passing in the context, then passing in the key. So this is going to be the Ruby ore key, then passing in feature.or, because in this case, this is an ore feature, and then a new ore feature config passing in the overworld ruby ores, and then a size. The size over here is the size of the veins. So when a vein spawns in a in the world, then this is going to be how big it is maximally. And then you can actually copy this twice, and then the nether ruby ore right here. And here we want the end ruby ore key. There you go. And then let's see, we want to change this to the nether ruby ores, and then this to the end ruby ores right here. There you go. We can just keep the numbers over here the same. I highly recommend when you play around with this to keep the numbers a little bit higher than you actually want them, you know, later in the actual release of the mod as it's, you know, it's just easier if the numbers are bigger because if you get put in a one here or a two, then it's just going to be very, very rare, basically. Or like the, the veins are just going to be very small. So keep that in mind. But that is the mod configured features class done. And now we are actually going to move on to the mod or placement class as this one is more of a helper class, actually. And for this, we're going to press shift twice and look for the or placed features class this one right here because this has our three methods that we want to copy over because in this case they are all private for some friggin reason and they are actually really useful because they sort of determine a couple of things so here you just want to remove this and then remove this and there you go and all of a sudden we got our mod or placement class done basically this is just going to make it easier to def define the way that this placement is going to work and then we can proceed to the mod placed features class in here, we'll require, once again, three registry keys. But first, we need two helper methods once again. So this is going to be the register key method as well as the register method over here. So nothing too crazy. And once again, three keys over here for each of our different placed features. So there's going to be public static final registry key of type placed feature in this case. This is the Ruby underscore or underscore placed underscore key. And this is going to be equal to a register key. And this is then going to be equal to Ruby or placed. I like to rename this one to have placed instead of the name, just so that it's a little bit delineated from the configured feature. And we can duplicate this and get this one under the nether Ruby or. And here, of course, as well in the name, very important. And then this is the end underscore Ruby or. And then this is the end Ruby or as well. And in this case, placed features are actually features that are actually placed inside of the world where the configured features are sort of a sort of an in-between step between, you know, a normal block and a actual feature that's placed inside of the world. The place feature, as the name suggests, is the thing that's actually actually placed in the world. But this once again, we need a public static void bootstrap method over here with a registerable of a type place feature. Uh, this once again, the context here in this case. And then inside we need a var, it's called the configured feature registry entry lookup. And yes, I will call it that because it is because that's what it is. And there's going to be context.get register lookup registry keys dot configured feature. Now, why do we need this insanity? The reason why we need this insanity is we somehow need to be able to refer back to the configured features right here, which is basically done via this lookup over here. It's a little bit complicated, but it is what it is. That's basically the, the reason why we need this. And then we can register this. So we can register not the key, but we actually want to call the register method, passing in the context again, then the Ruby or place key. Then we want to get the configured feature registry entry lookup over here, get or throw. We want to say mod configured features dot 
Ruby or key as the first closing parentheses comma mod or placement and of course they are not made public what is this craziness they of course need to be public over here that is a big folly there you go now they are public and now all of a sudden we can also call them so there's going to be the modifiers with count how about that and the count is basically the number the veins per chunk right so this is going to be veins per chunk here in this case and then we want a placement modifier this is going to be a height range placement modifier dot uniform and this is going to be from y offset dot fixed minus 80 let's say to y offset dot fixed plus 80. What do the numbers mean? What does this craziness mean? Well, basically, we're going to place the Ruby or key, right? The configured feature that is going to be placed with a veins per chunk count of 12 right here in this case. And it's going to be placed between a minus 80 in the world of Y level to plus 80 in the world. If you want to change the numbers over here, you can change them. I highly recommend just using fixed. It's, it's basically just the normal Y level that you know. And using uniform means that at any part of the distribution, so all the way from minus 80 to all the way to plus 80, this has the same likelihood of spawning. If you were to use trapezoid, then the middle would be the highest distribution of the spawn. So in our case, right from minus 80 to 80, it will be zero because that's exactly in the middle from if you were to draw a triangle, right, with a point minus 80 and plus 80, and that will be right in the middle. But in this case, we're going to choose uniform and we can duplicate this twice, making sure we change we change everything, both the nether ruby or placed key as well as the nether key right here. And the rest can basically stay the same if you so choose to. Same here, right? We want to change this to the end ruby or placed and here to the end ruby or key. Very important that we change both of them and then we're basically good to go. Now, as always, of course, all of the code is available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository, so no worries at all. Now, this is not quite done just yet because we need to do two more steps. Now, the first step is, of course, the bootstrap method over here is called nowhere. So that, of course, doesn't quite work. So how does this going to work? Well, we need a new data gen class. So let's go into our data gen package over here, create the mod world generator. This is going to extend the fabric dynamic registry provider. We're going to hover over this and implement the configure as well as the get name method. The get name over here is just going to be the world gen. There you go. We're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super, which I believe should be good to go. Yeah, we're good to go with this one. And then in the configure method, we just want to say entries dot add all. You want to then say registries dot get wrapper or throw registry keys dot configured feature. We want to duplicate this line and then also add the place feature. In this case, because we're adding a place feature and a configured feature, we want to add both of those to the lookup so that we can actually, you know, use it right here, right? So basically, when we get the registry lookup over here of the configured features, then we wouldn't even be able to, like, take a look at them. So that's the general idea there. Now, the mod world generator is then used in the tutorial mod data generator right here. So we can basically just copy this over or duplicate it over. Mod world generator, quote unquote, new, should work without an issue. But this is where our bootstrap methods are called because we also want to override the build registry method right here, where we will call registry builder dot add registry, registry keys dot, and then the configured feature. And as a second parameter, mod configured features, colon, colon, not register key, but the bootstrap method over here, no error should be present. We can duplicate this at the place feature and then the mod place features right here. And all of a sudden we have both of our configured and our place features registered and they will now be created when we run the data gen, all of the different things. So this is going to be a Ruby or our nether Ruby or on our end Ruby or configured features are going to be registered and created as a JSON file in the same way our three place features are also going to be created via a JSON file. We can actually do this already. So we can run the data gen over here and you will be able to see, right? This is, of course, taking a moment over here, basically generating the JSON files. But once this is run through, you can see, there you go, six written JSON files. You can see tutorial model world gen finished after 25 milliseconds. So that was a thing that was added here. And under our tutorial mod world gen, all of a sudden we have a place and a configure feature. As you can see, these are our JSON files. And if you wanted to do this manually, then this is the type of JSON file that you would have to create in this case. So do keep that in mind. I just highly recommend you don't do that because it's just way easier to set it up once. And then if you have more ores, you just basically duplicate the things that you've already created. And that's as easy as that. 
However, right now, they will not yet spawn inside of the world. That's very important because we still have this gen folder that doesn't do anything. And that is because we still need two new classes in here. We need the mod world generation in there as well as the mod or generation. And we're going to start with the mod or generation. This one is going to have a very straightforward public static void method called generate ors. It's going to generate them via the mod modifications with an S at the end over here dot add feature we're going to say biome selectors dot found in overworld in this case and then we wanted to add this at the underground or step and then mod placed features dot ruby or placed so you can see the way that this is set up right in the add features method we first of all want to select which biomes we're going to spawn this in then at which step in the case of the ores it's always going to be underground ores of course and then here we're going to choose which is the place feature that we want to spawn so we're going to duplicate this twice and then change this to found in nether right here and changing the place feature to the nether ruby ore and then here found in the end and this is then the end ruby ore that I want to spawn. Make sure to of course change the biomes over here if you want to change them. You can also use things like biome selectors dot and you can see you can use a tag you can exclude by a key or you can also include by a key so there's a different there's different types of ways that you can do this in this case you're just going overworld for the normal ones nether for the nether ruby or and this is actually end this is this would have been terrible this is actually found in the end there was a little bit of a typo there that's not good so there you go so that's why i this this is why you have to double check your code even i can also sometimes run into some typos over here but there you go so that is the found in overworld found in nether and found in the end awesome and now in the mod world generation this is basically just sort of a collection class that i like to create this is not strictly necessary but this is fine mod generate mod world gen over here and then call mod or generation dot generate ors and basically if you have like tree generation entity generation things like that then you can just add this right here and that's how easy it is because then we are just going to call this singular thing over here mod world generation dot generate mod world gen and now if we were to add to this then it's also automatically getting called awesome now with the JSON files created and the mod world generation generate world over here done, we can now jump into the game, make a new world just in case. It's just a little bit easier to see it that way. And we can hunt for our ores deep beneath the earth. Let's take a look. All right, friends, let's back in Minecraft and let's just take a look and see if we can find our ores over here somewhere. And there we actually go. We already have a deep slate ruby ore found and the other one should also be spawning. However, it might be. Oh, well, I mean, there you go. That's actually, you know, disregard this because there it already is, right? We got our ruby ore and our deep slate ruby ore spawning in the world. Absolutely freaking fantastic. So, yeah, that's that's the overworld. Let's let's also take a look at the nether. All right, so we're out here in the nether and let's take a look. Sometimes it's a little harder to find, but once again, I speak and there we already have it. So this is the nether ruby ore as well. So last but certainly not least, let's also take a look at the end. All right, we're in the end and you can immediately see that we also find some end ruby ore over here. So that is absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is going to be world gen, specifically, of course, origin done in overworld nether as well as the end. And we're going to vaguely continue with Worldgen in the next tutorial right here, where we'll create a custom tree. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.